Hi everyone, George Scarpese here, craft hairdresser, co-founder of the Hairbrain community, bringing you another episode in our series called Professionals Who Practice, and that's uh, in association with our friends at Pivot Point. So just like the name says, the idea here is that uh, you should practice things maybe that you haven't been doing a lot of lately or that you want to learn new. And a great way to do that is to work with uh, high quality mannequins. I'm working here with the amber mannequin, which you can see has this beautiful curly texture. A nice tight curl, which is just incredible to work with. And, uh, you know, for myself, with this texture of hair, really for, for you know, the past couple years, I've mostly worked dry cutting and free form sculpting and shaping, uh, which I think is a beautiful way to work with it. But I also think that, um, you know, there's still a lot of reasons to work technically with very curly hair. Uh, I think especially when you want a stronger creative shape. Um, you know, a lot of times with me when I'm working more free form and dry and kind of sculpting curly hair, it's because I want a more organic, airy, softer shape. But sometimes you want something more dramatic and that's what I wanted to practice here today. So you can see with Amber, I've taken a section from top of the occipital bone that curves up and then curves back down towards the top of the ear. And I'm working on a flat graduation here to hug into the head. Overall, this is going to be a, a much shorter look with a strong shape to it and something reminiscent of kind of what we used to call a Nefertiti where the crown is very full um, and around it there's a lot of shape to support it. So it kind of has that like uh, Egyptian queen kind of shape to it, hence the name Nefertiti. So working on what I would call a flat graduation, meaning it just pretty much mirrors the head shape in this case, in this panel. So just combing directly out from the head and cutting with my fingers parallel to the head shape. Um, obviously, to control this hair, I need to use some tension. Um, and then I also need to take into account shrinkage and texture change if I'm gonna use tension. Um, so I looked at the hair quite thoroughly dry and wet um, you know when the hair was dry I could see how much it had shrunk up and then when I wet it and combed it through and played with it I want to see how much spring there is and as you can imagine there's quite a lot of spring here uh, probably two to three inches of spring uh, but knowing that I'm going for a short haircut that's how I kind of came in and chose this length on the bottom um, I'm also looking at the curl pattern and I want to cut you know either in the S's or the C's so you can see here, I'm, I'm completing the curl pattern. I, it's very loose tension right now, but you can see I'm cutting right about there, stretching it and looking at the pattern and cutting to get, you know, the curl at its, at its perfect kind of formation or close to it as I can. So I encourage your questions here. And again, if you're just joining us, I'm working wet and technically on very curly hair, which to be honest is something I don't do a lot of that much anymore. I work a lot more freeform, sculpting, I work dry, I think it's got a lot of benefits, absolutely. But um, this is also a great way to put in strong shape, working wet and technically. And with this series, Professionals Who Practice, uh, the idea is to, you know, kind of pull out a mannequin and maybe work on something that you haven't been doing a lot of or maybe never done before. So I thought to myself, wow, I have this great amber mannequin with this beautiful curly hair. And it's been really a while since I did a strong technical shape on very curly hair. So that's what I'm in it for. And you guys let me know what you think. Again, I know a lot of you are working more dry with curly hair. And we've had a great renaissance of, you know, people understanding how to work with curly, highly textured hair. Um, and a lot of people embracing it, which I think is wonderful. And a lot of it has been about dry cutting and sculpting, which I also think is wonderful. But I wanted to do a little bit of a technical shape. And you can see what's happening here. Just working a little bit visually as I go on the edge and you can see what I mean by a flat graduation. <clears throat> now I'm going to turn the head shape so that we can start to address the opposite side. You can see the sections were kind of curved like heart shaped. So you know when I got this I thought you know what it's been a while since I've done a technical curly haircut. Um, of course I looked for some inspiration on Instagram and I found a photo that we had posted from uh, Pakila Riley just a few days ago that, in all honesty, I think it was actually dressed in pins, but I love the shape and I said, hey, I wanna cut into that shape. Um, you can head to our Instagram to check that out. Um, and then of course, 
I looked for inspiration where I think, you know, technical haircutters look for inspiration. I looked to uh, Sassoon and I looked at some of their latest collections and there was a collection called Poetica that I thought had a beautiful, it was actually cut on permed hair, but very similar to this texture. And I said, hey, I want to play around with that idea. So that's the idea of professionals who practice, you know, when you want to, if you always do things, you know, based on your own intuition and your own feeling, I mean, that can be great, but it can also put you in a rut because if your intuition and your feelings aren't changing, then you're always doing things the same way. So the idea here is to look outside at other people, see what they're doing and how they're doing it and try it for yourself and do it in a safe space using a great high quality mannequin. And this is Courtney from Behind the Camera. You guys, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. And I will relay them to Gerard. Gerard, how often do you find yourself practicing? Uh, constantly, you know, because number one, I spend a lot of my weekends teaching. So I've always thought of teaching as learning and practicing. So, you know, if it's two or three days a week where I'm in front of a group working with mannequins and, you know, getting to go through, it's a constant thing. On my own at home, I do it very often as well. Especially if I have a few weeks off from teaching, that's when I start to formulate, you know, my new ideas for what I want to share. And, uh, you know, anybody that looks on my Instagram page will see that I'm always putting up photos of different shapes that I've been doing on, on mannequins. So I get to practice a lot, practicing right now. And for those just joining, <clears throat> um, what mannequin head is this from Pivot Point? This is the Amber. Um, Amber, you'll get to see her more as we get this bottom done. Amber is this beautiful curly textured hair. Um, she's got the smaller head shape, which I really prefer for practice and classes because you can get the same, everything's the same. You have a good amount of hair, but it's just like a smaller head shape. So you can get your idea in quicker and you can try it out um, and kind of see how it goes. Sometimes, you know, the larger head shapes are great too, but it's a lot more work. And I, you know, to be, I've had this mannequin for a while and I haven't cut it. Um, so I was excited when uh, we said, hey, we need to do one this week. I said, well, what haven't I done in a while? And I looked through the mannequins, and as soon as I saw Amber there, I was like, I want to work with some really curly hair. So again, if you're just joining us, it's definitely going to be a shorter shape. Um, and I'm using stronger geometric cutting, you know, for that reason. I definitely do a lot of free form cutting on curly hair. Um, I cut curly hair dry very often. And actually, it's been a while since I've done a wet technical shape um, on very curly hair. So that was my idea. That's what I wanted to practice. So this is what I would call kind of a flat graduation. I'm <clears throat> just cutting parallel to the head shape, literally. Overdirecting a little bit as the head rounds here to build a little bit of weight behind the ear. I took a, a decent amount of time combing through amber, looking at her wet and dry to determine the hair texture, how much it was going to shrink. Um, and that helped me decide what the length should be. And Lauren's asking, are you using medium tension and how fine are the teeth on your comb? I am actually using very high, strong tension. And I know that can be a little scary with curly hair. Um, and very often we cut curly hair with very loose freeform tension. But what I'm trying to do is actually create a much stronger shape. Um, so I have to just factor that in as I'm cutting how much it's going to shrink back. I mean, literally this hair is cut out here, but when it shrinks back and it's dry, it's going to shrink back quite a lot. When I looked at her hair dry, I would say it easily shrinks two to three inches. I mean, as you get shorter like this, it's not going to shrink quite as much, but in some of the longer areas, you'll see the shrinkage happening. So I'm using high tension because I want to have a really precise, strong shape. Um, but then giving myself extra length in all the guidelines that I create. And Tamara's asking if you're over-directing. Yes, Tamara, as I work out through the, behind the ear, so I'm kind of following the head shape to about here, and then where the head shape starts to round away, it becomes stationary. And that's to keep a little bit of extra hair to work with throughout the haircut behind the ear here. All right, I'm gonna move into the next panel. And as I said, um, I was also inspired by one of the places where a lot of technical hair cutters go for inspiration. When I knew I wanted to do something technical and geometric, I looked at some Sassoon collections and videos that I had, and I saw something called Poetica, which was a collection from a few years ago, and I thought that was really a beautiful finish. First, you know, I always judge something by how it looks when it's done, not the technique. Um, so I saw a certain picture in that collection that I thought was fantastic. It was on permed hair. 
uh, but I really wanted to try it out. <clears throat> so I looked at how it was cut. And I'm kind of doing an interpretation of that cut, which is fun. It's always good, you know, no matter how experienced you are, to try other people's approaches and ideas. That's how you kind of grow. Because if you always do, you know, what's natural to you, you're not going to have too much growth. Okay, now taking a section, like a graduated bulb section, diagonal forward. And now I'm starting to build up. So the idea of this shape by the time I'm done is what we like to call kind of Nefertiti. If you think of an Egyptian queen or princess, very full on the inside and very kind of tapered and graduated all around. <clears throat> so I'm starting to get into this area where I'm building into the crown. Um, I want to start to create a disconnection from this panel of graduation on the underneath. Um, and again, here's a good example. So if I come through and I want to test shrinkage here, I'll just bring this out and I'll start to just cut a little bit off. So here I'm cutting about an inch off with tension and let's see how much that shrinks compared to the hair next to it. So I've cut an inch and had easily two inches of shrinkage and then by the time it's dry, perhaps three inches. So I really need to take that into consideration. Um, so if I think to myself, I wanna cut this and when it's dry, I want it to just have a subtle disconnection. It really takes a little bit of kind of playing around to get it just right. And also looking at the pattern of the curl from C shaping and S shaping to determine where I want to cut it. Okay, now that wet, you can still see the disconnection, but as this dries and starts to expand and I get freehand with it, I think that's gonna be just about the right length for this. I've got our good friend Tristan Morrison watching. He says, hello. Hey Tristan, Tristan's just opened a new salon up in Toronto. You know, a great educator I've worked with for many, many years and uh, he has just opened a brand new salon called Morrison & Co. You guys should check it out and he'll be doing some more Facebook Lives for us soon. And have you prepped her hair with anything aside from getting it wet? I did. So when I shampooed it, I used um, a Redken product for curly hair that's kind of a co-wash a co product from this line. It's from the uh, Curvaceous line. And then I actually put a few drops of this um, ringlet, which is kind of like a creamy for spirals through the ends combed it through, and then I also used a little bit of prep from Orenco. So yes, there's definitely product in the hair um, so that it would make it easier for me to manage. And then also I could see it kind of, as it dries, uh, see the style. Okay, I'm gonna adjust this a little bit. I'm gonna take one more C shaping off. I think it might be a little too long. So again, that's the thing with curly hair. You have to cut it, look at it, see how it responds. Always remember you can't put it back. So as I curve around here, I'm just taking one more C. I mean, I, you know, I think about cur curl that way. It's, it's basically an S pattern, you know, that repeats itself. Um, and when you're thinking about what you're taking off, it's either taking off a full C or a full S. I know that's a simplified way, but it, it tends to work pretty well for me. So we've got a lot of people just joining us. We have mm -hmm. Amy from upstate New York. We have people here from Hong Kong. We have Pakistan, Switzerland. Let us know where you guys are watching from. Yeah, and if you have any questions, I know, you know, I'm working in a strong manner using technical cutting on very, very curly hair, which to be honest, um, I'm not doing as much anymore. I'm cutting much more visual and freehand on curly hair and cutting it dry most of the time. So that, that was my inspiration. I'm like, hey, let me try something I haven't been doing a lot of. Just to keep life interesting, to keep myself challenged, and that's what we're doing here. So I'm working into the second panel um, and working a slightly overhung disconnection using fine, fine teeth of the comb, high tension, because I want this hair to pop back, and then really determining exactly where I want to cut that curl. And how big are the sections that you're taking? Uh, they're about uh, three quarters of an inch to you know a half an inch at the most. You know, it, obviously, since I want to build a really detailed shape, if my sections are a little too thick, it'll be hard to see the guideline, hard to control it, and um, I want to really take my time with this. I'm going to keep working through. You can see the sectioning here. So it's probably a little less than half an inch, maybe about a half an inch or so. Mostly consistent in that way all the way through. So building some weight here by 
elevating down to the previous section and then cutting what a lot of people would consider a triangular line, slightly shorter in the center back. And then as I come around the side, I angle outward. You know, so using the fine teeth of the comb when I'm cutting, using the wide side to take clean sections, and then the fine side to get even tension from the roots to the ends, and creating a lot of tension in my fingers by folding these two fingers in. That always helps me get a lot more tension. And obviously being deliberate, knowing that when you use tension, curly hair is going to shrink back. And end result here is I do want a short haircut. So I'm using the tension to help me with that. Please share your questions, you know, thoughts, comments, you know, who out there is working with very curly hair? Or are you like me? If you've been cutting mostly kind of more dry and free form, doing this kind of cutting, pinching curls, and which I love, you guys know that I love kind of anything innovative. Um, but I also still have a deep love for technical haircutting. And that's what I wanted to accomplish here today. And it can really be distinctive on very curly hair. Super distinctive. You know, I love organic shape, but sometimes a really strong shape, you know, and again, I was uh, looking through our harebrained underscore official Instagram, and I saw a beautiful shape from Pekila uh, Riley, who's a beautiful hairdresser. Um, and I think the shape was actually pinned and dressed because I looked on the model's Instagram page uh, to see more of the, the hair, the, what I thought might, maybe was a haircut. And it looked like it was more pinned and dressed. And again, that's the beauty. Um, I was inspired by a style, but to try to cut into a similar shape. And can we, can you go over again why you're cutting her hair wet? Chris says, I don't like cutting curls wet. I prefer dry cutting so I can see exactly where they're going when I'm done. That's great, Chris. And I cut dry curling most of the time myself. So the idea of today's lesson is to do things to practice. So people, uh, you can cut curly hair wet, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of reasons to cut it dry, and I most of the time cut it dry, so this is called professional shoe practice. So it's been a while since I've done a wet, curly cut. So for myself, it's about practicing. And for you, and for anyone, I think, it, whenever you believe there's only one way to do things, you limit yourself. So I encourage you, Chris, even though you love cutting curly hair dry, See if you can challenge yourself, and that's what mannequins are great for. This is a beautiful amber mannequin. I can practice around and see and make corrections and keep myself interested. I've been doing hair now for 30 years, and the one thing that I've learned, I've learned a lot, one of the things that I've learned is never say never, yeah? If there's something that you believe is absolutely right about, you should always do this, you should always do that, eventually you're always proved wrong in this industry. As trends change and styles change, so challenge yourself to try other things. There is no wrong and right. It's only wrong if it doesn't look good when you're done. And it's right if it looks great when you're done. And that's all that matters. So finishing off, there'll be a lot more layering to happen on the top after this, but I wanna get this all into this shape, combing the hair down with high tension and keeping it elevated at a graduated angle. So it'll kind of look like a very kind of fun graduated bob right now. And then there'll be another um, step to the haircut. If you can step back, you can see the angle a little bit, Courtney. Maybe step back right here. Slight disconnection in the crown to play with. Flat panel of graduation here. And then obviously a very kind of extreme angle that's next going to be layered from the front. But first I have to catch up and do the opposite side. So coming through here now. I'm working on some graduation. We'll turn around. Courtney's had to have a good angle. So if you're just joining us, you can see that flat panel of graduation through the underneath. Now through the top, adding an overhanging graduation, slightly disconnected. And again, I'm always looking for inspiration to challenge myself. So um, I haven't done any wet technical curly hair in a while. So when I said, you know what, that's what I want to do for my practice session. I started to look around and um, I looked at, you know, since I think they're some of the best technical hair cutters in the world, I looked at what Vidal Sassoon had been doing with curly hair in the past few years and I saw um, a collection called Poetica that had a beautiful curly shape in it and I'm like, okay, I want to figure out how that was done. So I dug into it a little bit and this is definitely inspired by that beautiful haircut. So no matter how experienced you are or what you believe, you gotta try new things. You gotta, you know, you gotta say, hey, 
I've been doing it this way a lot, let me try it a different way. And your best friend with doing that is a high quality mannequin because you can take it out and play with it and see what you get. Okay, so you can see I use the guideline on the opposite side, slightly disconnected, curved around into what people would call a triangular graduation. And I'm gonna continue up this side finishing that off. And then there'll be some layering that's gonna happen that'll really transform the shape. And Irene says, thank you for sharing. Christy loves strong shapes on curls that they are her favorite. And she also practices on wet and dry curls. Good, yeah. You know, the thing that worries me sometimes about our industry and hairdressers in general is that we get dogmatic. <clears throat> we say, oh, it's, this is the right way. This is the way you should do highlights. They must be in 10 foils and they must be this way. And then what happens to those people is sometimes trends change and they're stuck really in a, in a belief. Um, and you can get kind of left behind. So trying different things all the time and always judging, I, this is the recommendation I give everyone, judge by the end result. If you see something that you think looks great, see how that person did it. Don't judge by the process alone. First judge the end result, then judge the process. I think, you know, if you want your career to go on for a very long time, and you want a lot of opportunity, you have to be very open-minded. You have to be great with your hands, so, you know, cutting hair, curly hair, whether it be wet or dry, has to be done really well with your hands. So that's the craft part. You have to learn your foundations, practice your foundations, and really have incredible dexterity. So whether it's working individually, freehand, curl by curl, which I love, or whether it's working extremely technically with real control over the cutting lines, you gotta love that too. Tamara says, thanks for sharing. She's feeling very inspired. Well, I'm glad. That's a big part of practicing, you know? it's. Um, if you're constantly practicing, you'll constantly be inspired, yeah? And that's what this whole series is about. We've had some of the most accomplished professionals in the world on uh, this series of professionals who practice, and they all say the same thing. You know, everyone that I know that's a great hairdresser, very successful educator, they'll all say they practice a lot. They've got great mannequins at home, because um, of course we all love to cut live models, but you know what, if you're inspired, on your day off in the middle of the day and you want to try something new, you might not have a, a live model to work with. And you know what, you, you might, your idea might not be fully formed. So maybe trying it out, playing with a mannequin, you know, thinking about it, saying, oh, maybe I should have done it this way or done it that way. It's a great thing for hairdressers to do. And in the end, it'll just make you more successful and happier in your craft. Working up to this last section on the top before we start the layering. And to be honest, you know, with some freehand refinement, this could be a cool little graduated shape. It's not the end result, because I'm gonna layer this through quite a bit. But even just this panel in the back with some um, disconnected graduation over it, you could have a shape here. I still, with this, even though I'm cutting very technical now, after the hair is dried, there'd still be some freeform sculpting to do, because that's just the nature of curl. That's the nature of straight hair, too. Very rarely do I just say, okay, it's dry, it's done, bye-bye. There's always refinements that happen dry. So we're cutting really here wet and dry. Okay, so again, looking for that shape. Right now, I've got a ton of weight through the front that's going to change because if you've been watching from the beginning, the idea here is to do a Nefertiti-inspired shape. And that means it's going to be very full through the crown. So you can see it's starting to happen here. Now I need to work off the front. So we're going to move into this next and final area of the technical haircut. Let's turn her around. Hello, Courtney. You've got a, no questions, but a lot of love coming in. Well, good. Well, I love questions. So anything you guys want to talk about, I'm game. So any questions about the industry, about your career? Let's have some fun while we have some time together here. Let's see. So Chris is asking, are you over directing to the previous section or to a stationary guideline around the head shape? So with the graduation that I was just doing, it was down to the previous. So I was building graduation. I didn't bring it all down to one point. I brought it down to the previous and continually elevated. I was also angling my fingers outward and over directing slightly back. Now through the top, again, 
you know, technical haircutting is about understanding over direction and elevation, super important. So I'm gonna take my first section here now, and it's gonna curve like the hairline, so that I have an even amount of weight from the top to the bottom. Hairlines don't go vertical, and they don't go diagonal, they go in a curve. So that helps me. I've got the same thickness here, here, and here. <clears throat> now I'm gonna be starting from the front, and I'm gonna be layering this hair. It's gonna have uh, a shorter quality at the hairline. So shorter curls here, and I'm gonna be over-directing the hair forward, so we're gonna be going to short to long this way. Again, that idea of a very full crown and building up to it from other areas. So I'm gonna get her down, I'd even lift her chin up a little bit. Now I wanna look at the existing length on the side here. And I wanna just let some of that about mid-temple drop out, and then I wanna use a guideline from about mid-temple and cut a slightly curved line through to the front. Lots of tension here, knowing this hair is gonna shrink and knowing that I want some short stuff around the face that's gonna really push and support and also knowing that there'll be more carving when it's dry. So I think that's gonna be a great length because it's gonna go right up where I want it. Let me check through one more time. Obviously that first guideline sets the tone for the whole haircut, so it's really important. High tension, deliberately. Obviously, we love low tension, dry cutting on curly hair. I do it most of the time. I haven't done a super technical curly haircut like this wet in a while, and that's why I'm doing it, to keep pushing myself. Up and forward, following the guideline across, kind of slightly curved with the head shape. And again, that should run out about mid-temple, respecting the length that I created. Slightly forward, even on this first section, because I know all this is gonna be over-directed forward as I work through. Plenty of room for freehand cutting later. Sometimes I'll do a little bit now, but don't get sucked into it when the hair is wet, because it's hard to read. So we've got another question coming in from Chris. She said, aside from aiming them away from the mirror, how do you alleviate a client's concern about the amount of hair they perceive coming off the length? It's all about consultation. It's all about people skills. Great hair, hairdressing is, um, you know, 90% communication. She said, when layering. Yeah, it's 90% communication and, you know, doing your best to explain things to people without getting overly technical asking their permission every time, letting them see. I, I wouldn't say turn them away from the mirror. I think anyone, I was just talking to someone recently who's in the beauty industry, but not a hairdresser, who gets, got his hair cut, um, and he said, I knew that they effed up because they were doing like a fade on him because they turned me away from the mirror, and I ended up with my hair cut a lot shorter than it normally is. So, you know, engage them. Don't try to hide from them. And you know what? If they're not ready for it, then don't do it. I never try to convince people. If they think, oh, you know, I, I, I'm very clear. I say, I'm gonna have to cut this much off for it to look this way. If they're like, oh, no, no, no. I say, okay, I can do a, a much longer version. It's not gonna, to me, look as great, um, but that's your choice, and let's do it and see what happens. Um, so again, there's no easy answer, but for me, probably the last thing I would do is try to hide it from them. It's all about communication. It's all about getting that buy-in um, and expressing yourself very, very well. Okay, now using that same guideline, standing behind, using overhand cutting, high tension, and cutting a curved line across the top of the head, respecting the length in the lower temple area. And the whole idea here is to get a graduation now that's going to work this way to the longer crown. We appreciate the support of, uh, you know, this is probably, we're getting into <clears throat> the mid 400s, over 400 times we've done this type of uh, Hairbrain Live with myself and lots of educators in the industry. And we appreciate the ongoing support. And we appreciate the support of brands like Pivot Point who, uh, who believe in this kind of education. It's interesting, you know, when they, when we started this program with them, 
they just asked us to not be overly promotional. They said, just do great education and show how people can use our mannequins. And that's the best message that you can give. Um, and I love that. And that's a lot of respect for, for this company that creates these incredible educational tools. Um, and that's what I'm using here, the Pivot Point Amber Mannequin. So if you're wanting to try something new, want to practice, head over to pivotpointshop.com. Um, they have great sales there all the time on mannequins. And um, I know they just announced like some uh, bulk buying program for salons that do a lot of education. So I think that's all amazing. Um, and Elizabeth is asking, can you explain why you're standing behind your client? <clears throat> for me, it's the most comfortable. Um, I could stand in front of her and, I, and get the same shape. Uh, but for me, kind of pushing away and having tension like this is the most comfortable. I could definitely stand in front of her like so, and I would probably cut inside the hand. Um, I think one of the challenges for me with this shape is it's a little harder to cut rounded inside the hand because your hand doesn't bend back. Whereas when you see this, my hand bends this way a little bit more. But that being said, you know, body position to me is like dancing. I think there's a lot of different ways to get the moves that you need. So you could stand in front. Working over the head, just checking that last section, over directing forward, and working out. Looking for that shape. Turn her in the profile now so you guys can get another example of what's happening here. You can see the previous shapes that were cut, the shape in the bottom, the shape on the sides. Now I'm working through this top area. I'm going to start to blend more into the crown and be very conscious because the crown is the area I want to keep the longest in this shape. Again, if I've been referencing Nefertiti, kind of the Egyptian queen, um, and you always think of that image with the very full crown. I think it literally is a crown where the hair is kind of pushed up into the crown. And in this case, everything's working towards the longer crown. Lots of tension and curving my way through. And constantly looking for the expansion in the hair. I'm going to work on the opposite side now. Working back and forth definitely helps me keep, keep my shape on balance. Um, you know, being very organized here is making a big difference, taking fine sections. You know, and even when I cut hair like this dry um, and free form, you have to be very organized. It's not an excuse to just, you know, kind of chop away because it can just turn into nothing. Here going for a very strong technical shape. So working in a very technical method, sparred by my friends at Vidal Sassoon. Okay, I've got a mirror here that I'm looking at in the distance. Really enjoying what's happening now. Last few technical sections to cut here in the crown. And again, a lot of love coming in, but you guys, this is Courtney from behind the camera. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them and I will pass them along. So now you can see some of that disconnection dropping out and rounding off above it. So layering above that graduation to really let this shape be full and kind of springy. Over directing strongly forward. And I'll probably almost be stationary at this point because I want to keep as much of the crown as I can. So I was kind of strongly forward through the front of the head. And now as I get into the back, again, strongly forward and just rounding off a little bit of this hair here. And again, looking at that fullness in the crown. It's the main thing that I'm looking for. And knowing as the hair dries, I'll do some detailing freehand, but I don't want to get sucked into it too soon. When you're working with the hair wet to dry like this, um, it's going to be important to kind of let it go through its paces. Make sure you've got your shape in there and that you can really see everything the way that it needs to be seen. Again, coming back through. Now, the hair in the crown, looking for the guideline from the front, making sure I can see it clearly. 
very important, take a fine section. You can easily get lost here. So the hair's getting a little bit drier, and I'm so close to the finish of the haircut that I don't want to add a lot of moisture, but I need to be really, really paying attention to what's happening. Choosing to use great tension here, knowing that the hair is going to snap back, but having prejudged how much it's going to snap back as it dries. Running out of hair to cut here in the crown, should be the longest area. I'll even take it a little bit past the center and make sure nothing reaches from the opposite side. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of freeform cutting and then a little bit of drying. I think it's dried enough around the edges here that I can start to come in just with the tip of my scissor. And again, could you cut the whole haircut like this from the beginning? In a way you could. You'd have a different kind of shape and feeling in the hair. Um, and I love that shape and feeling, but also I love the fact that it's got a strong shape and then it's refined visually. And if you did the whole haircut like this, would you choose to do it wet or dry? Um, I would probably have done it more dry. I would have washed it, diffuse dried it to make sure I get the best curl that I can. Um, but in a natural way, I'd want to see where the hair was light and where it was heavy. Um, I wouldn't try to change the curl with diffuse drying. But I think sometimes, it, you know, when the client comes in, the hair can be really changed. So I would wash and condition or co-wash, whatever you think is appropriate. And um, I would do a very, you know, in a perfect world, I'd probably just put them under like a heat lamp or lights. I'd put the product in a little bit. I'd put them where I think it's really going to dry beautifully under the heat lamp. And then once that was dry, I'd come in and I'd do some sculpting. And I'm see, the inside's super technical. The outside's very sculpted. Which is not unlike how I, you know, sometimes cut straight hair. Looking for that shape there. Now coming to the second side. Obviously getting comfortable, you know, so if you're the opposite, we keep talking about people that are, you know, like myself, do a lot of dry cutting and so forth. But there are some people out there that never do that. They always do wet cutting. So, you know, maybe it's the opposite. You take a mannequin like this and you check out someone like the Mona Cut or um, Je uh, Jen does hair. These are people that are really kind of doing a lot of dry freeform sculpting. And, you know, you, you try it out for yourself. So if you're not someone who's done this type of cutting, more kind of free form and less technical, low tension cutting, you definitely want to try that. So getting the outline shape where I want it, looking for the expansion here, moving that hair around. And again, letting it dry more naturally now and starting to carve into it. There was some product put in before I even started cutting, so that product started to dry into the hair. Everything I'm thinking about is the crown, building everything up to here. Now some of that disconnection in the back, this gives me a nice, I don't want it from a distance for people to say, oh, look at those curls, they're longer than those curls. But I want to, and that's where the freeform cutting really comes in. It allows it, love that from the back. Yeah, a lot of love, a lot of love coming in for this cut. Good, we like love. We, love is the most important thing in the world. Coming through. Really using the mirror from a distance here as much as I can. Now I think before I continue, I'm gonna do a little bit of drying. 
So I'm going to add some pro more product. Um, I don't think I need to dampen the hair. This product, I think, will dampen it nicely. It's the Davin as your hair assistant blow dry primer. I love this as a root spray. I mean, I like it for a lot of things, but I like it to just give a gentle hold in the root. So going through, dampening it with some product at the root. They is asking, what did you perm her hair with? I didn't perm her hair. This comes from Pivot Point. Um, I'm not sure if they perm the hair or if this, they naturally get it this way. That's a good question. Um, it feels super natural to me, I have to tell you. And it doesn't have any odor of a perm. So this is the Pivot Point Amber. I believe that it's naturally curly, uh, but it could be chemically manipulated. But it doesn't feel like it at all to me. So really getting it at the roots, dousing the roots to give a little bit of control. Now working a bit more of Redkin's Curvaceous Ringlet through the middles and the ends. So a little bit of hold at the root, lots of curl definition through the middles and the ends. While we're talking product, what products did you use to prep the curly hair before the cut? This, I use exactly the same thing. I use this Curvaceous Ringlet and a little bit of the One Prep Spray from R Co. Redkin's Curvaceous Ringlet, I can show you again. And I also use the co-wash from this line to wash Amber's hair. And then first I gave her a good dousing with R Co. One Prep Spray. Uh, you know, we're lucky at Hairbrain, we get to work with all the best companies. So we get all the best products. So that's another way that I practice. I'm always trying different products to see how different things work together and combine together, and I, I love it. I'm gonna come back through with a wide tooth comb, now that the hair is dampened with product, just to make sure it's evenly distributed from the roots to the ends, and just kind of reset that curl. So I didn't add water to it. I mean, every product has water in it, so knowing your products, I didn't feel like I needed to spray it down with straight H2O. Getting some lift here and distributing that product through. Wide tooth comb, smoothing it through, and the same here. Just helping those curls reset into their pattern. You can see the difference right away. It's kind of the, the natural pattern snapping back into place with some product in the hair. Obviously, I don't want to do that if the hair is dry. The products definitely dampen the hair nicely. If you're gonna use a lot of tension, you see how I hold it a little bit at the root so I'm not pulling too much on her head. I just kind of hold it down here. Okay, now I'm gonna put a little bit of heat on it. Again, in a perfect world, the way I love to dry hair like this is under heat lamps or heat lights. Um, but a little airflow can be can be good as well. So a nice large diffuser, lifting, but never raking through the hair, not pulling through, just lifting so the air can get in there. Use gravity a little bit. Bring the hair away from me to make. What I'm really trying to do is dry the product at the root. Because that's what's going to give me the volume and the expansion. Using head positioning. So now what I want to try to do here is get her to really lean back. So if she was in my chair, I might roll up a towel and have my guest or my client put their head on the towel off the back of the chair. So I want to try to get, I don't mind if some curls fall in the face, but I want to dry it off the face a little bit and then let nature take its course. When she's in this position, I can really start to kind of dry through. Yeah, 
there's lots of different philosophies on drying curly hair, and I think that that's great. For me, mainly because I want to do some dry cutting, I'm trying to expand the shape and get it 100% dry um, so that then I can carve it and have a consistent, consistent texture to work with. But there are lots of different ways, concepts about product, and again, that's the whole idea here. Learn about them and explore. Bring her up now. Now coming backwards for the back. So I went forwards, and now I want to go backwards. Again, always just trying to get those roots to fall away from the head and expand. You can see the crown is the longest, fullest area. That's what we were going for. And then once we get this hair totally dry, we can start to do some more freehand shaping. I can feel the product drawing into the hair. That's what I was looking for. Again, you can see when it was wet, when it falls down, it makes kind of that halo shape, which I think is a beautiful shape as well. But I wanted to dry it off the face. A little more dramatic, more expanded, really go for that full crown. And knowing that I want to do some cutting dry to finish the shape, very important that I get an even dryness. Feels like it's almost there. Like that little bit of excess in the crown. We come in with a little bit of perfecting hairspray. Again, just because I want to keep this expansion as I work. So I'm just spraying it and diffusing it right into the hair. I think that just hits the 100% dry mark right about now. I'm going to take a moment to look at my shape in the mirror. Loosen it a little bit just with my hands. I've got hairspray on there and product. And this is what I can detail, kind of like the cross-checking and the detailing. So I feel like it's a little bit fuller on this side. Now working more visually, more free form, and also looking at some of the looser. Sometimes around the hairlines, the hair gets a little bit straighter and looser. Using the tip of the scissor sometimes, and using the flat of the scissor sometimes when I'm trying to strengthen the shape. It's almost like scissor over comb without a comb, like that. But keep yourself in check. It's easy to go too far. I almost call it like a, you need like a 30 second timer where you cut for like 30 seconds and then you stop. Looking at that shape, almost like scissor over comb here, and then some free form stuff. And all these details will be different depending on the client that you're working on and the desired re result. and constantly stopping to look in the mirror. And you know, give that hair a little tussle once in a while because it's easy for the scissor to push it into a shape that maybe isn't totally there.
Tamara says, I think this has been my favorite class yet. Thank you. I'm glad. It's been super fun for me. That, and that was my idea to do something a little bit out of my wheelhouse. You know, I mean, I do uh, very curly hair all the time, but I do it mostly completely freehand. At least I have been for the past, past couple of years. But in my background, I was a very technical wet cutter. And um, that's what I wanted to, to accomplish here today. Really the combination of the two, the technical and the visual. And working on that very full crown. Just being careful not to, you know, I have to stop myself. You, you get into this thing where you just keep cutting because it really feels natural and organic. But sometimes you need to stop and really look. Put yourself on the clock. And looking at the shape from the back as well as the front. Loosening it, you know, there's a bit of product in there, which is deliberate, but every once in a while, I'm breaking the product down a little bit as I work. And I, you know, I keep rotating again. Here you can see the idea of the profile, very full crown. That's, you know, from the beginning, what we're saying, the Nefertiti, everything working into a very full crown in a kind of a romantic way, really. Come back around to the front. You know, so having the technical shape in there helps to not have to work too hard at this stage. This is all just like the dessert. It's just getting exactly what I want to happen to happen. But again, the whole thing could be done this way. I want to encourage you guys to try different approaches to things. I'm gonna give it one more spin around, really just look at the edges. And that's where you can really see the idea of the Nefertiti, if you think of the Egyptian queen with the full kind of crown. That's the angle that we're looking for. Trying to bring the hairline under control nicely. One more time, all the way around. Oh, that's a good angle right there, too. And just to kind of enhance the shape a little bit, I'm going to push it in a little with a comb and some hairspray. Definitely looser on the top, perhaps even just separating out a few curls. in around the face. So there you have it, my interpretation of uh, a Nefertiti style of very, very curly hair using the amber mannequin, working highly technically, um, if you missed any part of this video and, you, and you're enjoying this final look, you can go back to the beginning at any time once it's finished. You can just kind of rewind, go through. You can see how I built the graduation in the back, used some disconnection, some layering, and then some freeform cutting. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It was a pleasure for me. I had a lot of fun. Thanks again to our sponsors, Pivot Point, for providing these excellent mannequins for us. And peace out, guys. We'll see you back here tomorrow.